The following program is brought to you by Caltech. Sure. So I can uh, just start us off by introducing maybe the uh, people who have helped put this together, the team uh, leads for this workshop. Uh, so uh, we'll have uh, Jason Rhodes, who I saw outside. There's Jason, uh, who's at JPL. Uh, Rob Fiesen in the front row from Dartmouth, uh, who will be speaking second. And uh, Sarah Miller, who uh, is here at Caltech and also UC Riverside, um, has been the main brainchild behind all of this. And uh, we'll welcome her to the podium to introduce us to the topic. Uh, thank you very much, Lynn Hillebrand, who's the co-lead here from Caltech. So um, with that, we want to give you a really warm welcome here to Caltech this morning. This short course marks the uh, official kickoff for the Keck Institute study, um, looking at airships and exploring how they might uh, be a really great new exciting platform for science. Um, we have a couple of goals this morning with the short course. We, uh, we're going to be looking um, at from a scientist perspective of how these platforms might offer um, interesting new uh, opportunities for science, and as well as how they might fit into the larger landscape of um, how we do observations um, in different areas of science, including atmospheric and earth sciences, as well as planetary, and then astronomy and uh, astronomical sciences and cosmology as well. So, even though there are a lot of experts on airships and enthusiasts of airships in the room, just to make sure everyone's starting off on the same page, airships are dirigible, um, lighter-than-air vehicles, which are maneuverable. And um, so really there's a number of uh, kind of obvious reasons why, as scientists, we might want to consider putting observational instruments, um, sensors, on airships, uh, Namely and overwhelmingly, how, um, how much flexibility potentially there is in terms of um, payloads, payload flexibility, uh, size and weight, um, also vantage point uh, from lower altitude airships all the way up to um, near space observing. And um, uh, there has been really a renaissance, uh, a resurgence in airship design and development and with the help of the Keck Institute um, and with the very generous, um, uh, 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 basically, the, gener the generous um, involvement of the major players in the development and design and engineering of these new airship uh, vehicles, um, as well as uh, technology, uh, technology experts um, who will really help in trying to integrate scientific instruments onto these airship platforms. Um, we're excited to uh, get this uh, uh, study off um, to the right, uh, on the right track. But um, from a scientist's perspective, there's really a, a couple of um, kind of categories of airships that we want to think of in terms of operating altitude. So um, at low altitude, really designed to lift very heavy cargo. Um, we've got uh, different uh, airships that are operating kind of at 12,000 feet and below. This is your more um, kind of, if, when you think about airships today, Goodyear blimps and this kind of thing, this is the kind of operational altitude we're talking about with these lower, um, uh, with these lower altitude uh, ships. But these uh, new generations of ships are designed to carry a lot more weight, tens, even hundreds of tons. Um, and then a little bit higher, we have a more intermediate altitude, kind of more of the operation of the higher ceiling of the classic airships, even all the way up to uh, commercial airliner jets. We've got um, a new class of uh, airships, including um, an interesting airship design, which is a hybrid, which is a combination of aerodynamic lift as well as buoyancy to keep the airships um, in operation. And... Um, this is a very interesting class, days to weeks of, at a time um, in uh, flight, um, as well as uh, very, uh, um, uh, as well as very uh, kind of um, long, long duration uh, flights as well in development. 
and at, and at higher altitudes, uh, pushing the ceiling kind of of the uh, uh, high altitude version of this um, jet platform up to the stratosphere, which takes us to the highest um, level of airships really in uh, development at this present time that are more interesting perhaps for the scientists who want to look up above most of the atmosphere, which is the stratospheric class, uh, very high altitude class of ships um, operating upwards from 60,000 feet. This is also the level um, of technology that uh, is, is uh, uh, less tested at this point, but we're all here to um, hear more about it and really consider what the possibilities are as the technology moves into more readiness levels um, as we uh, go forward. So um, in terms of scale, these things are the size of football fields, even football stadiums. So there's really a lot of um, uh, flexibility in terms of payload, and um, you can't help but uh, be excited about the possibilities of all different types of scientific um, instruments which can be accommodated on these things. And so we're going to be hearing later today um, from various uh, leaders in scientific fields, earth and atmospheric science, planetary science, as well as astrophysics and cosmology, um, in terms of what kind of uh, wish list we might have as scientists which could be accommodated by these airships. And really the possibilities are endless, but one thing that we want to do in the Keck Institute study is see how, see which different types of sciences could be accommodate, accommodated simultaneously on the same platform and really think about compatibility and coordinated airship technology since um, really in this uh, uh, kind of stage uh, of funding environment where we're sequestration is hitting and um, budgets are tightening up, Airships as quite a large platform and quite a flexible one really give us um, a way to accommodate many different types of science potentially on the same um, or a few craft uh, and really free up a lot of interesting programmatic space um, at national agencies and other funding bodies. And so um, really uh, we wish everyone in the room to think creatively about what uh, future airships might hold for science. And if, you're, if you come up with great ideas, we want to keep this as open as possible. As the first uh, phase of this airship study is taking off this week, um, please feel free to talk to any of the co-leads here. Um, Lynn introduced them before, Jason, uh, uh, Robert, uh, myself, and Lynn. And really, any of the participants of the study that you see uh, listed here, please feel free to have conversations. There will be a lot of, um, there will be a great, a great possibility kind of in the long term, uh, follow on, uh, potentially follow on stages of the study to get involved if you are interested.